Hey guys, Jay Snow with another video for you guys. So this is a deck tech for Cat Oven, which has gotten some huge upgrades for M21. So let's get right into it with gameplay following and the deck list at the end of the video. So the first new card in this deck before we go straight into the gameplay is Archfiend's Vessel, where basically you're using Cat Oven to sacrifice it and then Lurus to bring it back, activating his ability to create a 5-5 black flying demon, which is just what we need in Cat Oven decks, flying creatures. The next spell is uh, what do you call it? Village Rites, and what Village Rites does is it's very important because it's instant speed. A lot of cards that require sacrificing in this game, as far as black is concerned, to draw cards with sorcery speed. So to be able to do it at instant speed for one mana is absolutely amazing. And then the final new card is more of a tech card, but Vito Dorn of the Dusk Rose, whenever your opponent gains life, the target opponent loses that much life, and you can give all your creatures lifelink. This basically doubles the triggers of your cat of an ability and basically closes out the game pretty quickly once it gets on the field because your opponent will just start taking a ton of life. It's, it's a fun card. So now on to the gameplay. So on this one you're going to see a scavenging ooze being taken by Claim the Force Burn, Firstborn and then sacrificed by Village Rites. And then because Village Rites is uh, what you call it, instant, you can do it whatever you want, but because Claim the Firstborn is to the end of the turn, you can use it on your opponent's creatures and sacrifice it. So that's how we get rid of big threat. That's how we get rid of early threats. Even Oros, you can steal Oros with that, which is absolutely amazing. And then also we have the Lurus combo here with Archfiend's Vessel. So what you do right here is you sacrifice Archfiend's Vessel with either Spell or most ideally a Witch's Oven, and then use that to bring it back with your one per turn Resurrection from the graveyard. And then you get a turn, and then you get a five five Demon. So not bad setup for this small amount of turns. Now in this next part it gets a little bit <laughs> jumbled up because there's a lot of stuff going on. But basically when you play Vito, this is the one that deals damage equal to the amount of life you gain. Basically every food token becomes a little explosive for your opponent, dealing 3 damage to them, which is amazing. And then if you have Mayhem Devil on the field, you can go absolutely crazy with the sack triggers from the food tokens, the life gain from the... Cauldron Familiar entering the battlefield, so as you can see it enters here, it does one damage, then another one damage because the Mayhem da I mean because uh, Vito on the field, so it's basically triple damage every time something gets sacrificed, so it just, it gets bonkers really quick, especially if you can get multiple Mayhem Devils out, and it, it's a lot of fun for you, definitely not fun for the opponent, and then if you just want to finish them off, usually you can, get, if you have enough mana, you can get the lifelink off. Otherwise, the basics of the deck are mostly the same. You're just sacrificing the cat over and over again. But usually the cat is not what kills people. I've been killing people with Vito like over and over and over again. So while the cat is nice and the whole point of the deck kind of, for some reason they usually die to either Mayhem Devil triggers or just even regular combat damage because Vito's not in the field giving things lifelink. So right now I'm actually undefeated with this deck in the gold rank. I just hit platinum. I think in this video, yeah, in this video I hit platinum. So I'm going to see if I can hit a diamond with this deck, but otherwise it's extremely fun. So let's go right into the deck list. All right, so let's go into the deck list for this deck. So I run some odd amounts of cards. You can fix it up depending on how you wish. So I run three Archfiend's Vessel, four Claws and Familiars, three Village Rites, three Claim the four Firstborn. You could go up to four or throw one on your sideboard because this card is just awesome. It's Oro and all that crazy stuff. Plus being able to sacrifice your opponent's creature and attack them with it is awesome. Uh, four Witches. Oh, oh, also another tip with this. Uh, what do you call it? You can target your own creature and it will give it haste. So some people don't know about that, but you can actually just gain the Firstborn on your own creature and give it haste. So definitely make note of that. Four Witches Oven. Four Priests of the Forgotten Gods. I'm thinking about going down one because I'm not facing too many creature heavy decks. It's kind of slow, but when it goes, when it works, it definitely works. And your opponent is usually screwed if they only have like one or two creatures out on the field. So I'm thinking about maybe replacing it with another Midnight Reaper or another Claim the Firstborn. Run three Midnight Reapers. One Vito going to Dusk Row. Two Woe Striders. This is a basically a limited sack outlet as long as you have creatures on the field. Uh, Lurus to reborn the Archfiend's Vessel and then uh, maybe Witch's Oven if they destroy it. Four Mayhem Devils, because it does one damage every time you sacrifice something. One Bowl of Citadel. This is completely optional. It is a ton of fun. When this smacks the board and your opponent can't deal with it, they are definitely screwed. But <laughs> it right now it's just a fun card to close out the game. It's definitely not needed. Uh, I think I've only been able to pull it off once. Same thing with Command the Dread Horde. I haven't been able to pull this off just yet, but it will probably be amazing being able to grab all those creatures I sacrificed. But who knows. Uh, three Castle Lot Train. Seven Swamp, Blue Bouncing, Four Blood Cra Oh, uh, I don't have a I'm missing a Temple, so definitely get the other Temple. And Four Fabled Passage. 
Then on the sideboard. Sideboard is kind of iffy. I'm not good with sideboards. But basically Soul Guide Lantern for any graveyard synergy decks. Agonizing Remorse. Four of them. Four control decks. Get rid of cards from their hands. One Blight Beetle. Green decks. One Eliminate. This card's pretty awesome. The short Tower Creature Planeswalker. With converted mana cost three or less. At instant speed. Heartless Act to remove counters or destroy creatures. Noxie's Grasp for those Teferis. Two Ember of Shield Breaker to destroy target artifacts. Just case they're using their Soul Guide Lance against you. One Scorching Dragonfire. This is. I, I feel like I'm going to replace this. I just don't know what it deals three damage and exiles. Uh, this Liberation card that I can't say correctly. Uh, is This is the only thing that destroys enchantments. For some reason, I don't think Black or Red has any enchantment destruction that I know of. So, I, the only card I found was this. It's, I guess it's better to have it against Leyline and the Void, but if Leyline and the Void hits the field, you're probably screwed with this deck. That's the only major weakness, is trying to move enchantments on this deck is a real pain. And then one Thought Distortion for any long-term, uh, with long games, because this will rip their, exile their entire hand to holding up tons of counter spells. Oh, absolutely fun card. So, I thank you guys for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more Magic the Gathering content, and I hope to see you guys again.